Today is June 27. Here are some of the papers being highlighted for you this morning. We begin with the story on the front page of the Guardian newspaper. Out of pocket, high cost of care hits public hospitals, uninsured patients. That story is on page six. I see some graphics on the front page. Hospitals insist on deposit payment before care. Patients, caregivers stranded over a 150% hike in cost. I mean, other issues raised right there on the front page of the Guardian newspaper. The Vanguard has this one as well. Cholera, FG shopping for emergency vaccine. As Nigeria recalls 54 deaths, 1,579 cases in 32 states, according to NCDC. Poor sanitation, contaminated water, reason for spread. Scribe to Sawolu. Display product essential information. Lagos government directs stores. Details of that story you'll find on page 5 of the Vanguard newspaper today. Right under the picture of the front page, protesters want declaration of emergency in rivers. As Fubara alleges, protesters attempt to bomb hotel. Find the details of that story on the inside pages of the paper this morning. The Nigerian Tribune leads with that one. Explosion aimed to justify call for emergency rule in rivers, ascribed to Governor Fubara. One suspect arrested receiving treatment. That's according to the police. Details of the story you'll find on page four. Front page of the Daily Times newspaper, drop your arms, embrace dialogue, CUAS advises agitators, others, says it's only in a peaceful atmosphere that the economy of any country could thrive. Details of the story you find on page two of the paper this morning. Blueprint newspaper has this one, 432 billion naira fraud, Elfai sues Kaduna Assembly, seeks 1 billion naira damages, wants committee reports voided. That story is on the front page, continues on the inside pages of the paper. Nigeria News Direct, two weeks ultimatum, clock is ticking, address our demands, ASU to FG, consultations to continue across ministries to address education woes, as from the minister, stories on page three of the paper this morning. Business Day has this one. Ethiopia, UAE, Turkey strip Nigerians of visa on arrival, e-visa. What does that mean? Details you find on the inside pages of the paper today. That's the stories on the front page of the Daily Independence. Reverse crisis, explosion at hotel, ploy to foist state of emergency, according to Fubara. Pro Wiki ex LG chairman may freeze council's accounts, as from reps. But the lead study of the Daily Independent is Chinobo vows to sustain war against drugs, illicit substances, drug test kits, must for homes, schools, offices, according to Marwa. Details on the inside pages. These are some of the papers we have for you this morning. For my take this morning, first take this morning is on the front page of the Nigerian Tribune. It's the Nigerian Tribune's twist to that story uh, that also quotes uh, the federal government. Over 64 million people suffer from drug use disorders. Whether that is a figure that's about Nigeria, it's actually somewhere at the bottom of the page. Whether that is just for Nigeria or not, I guess we'll wait to see if you find the details on pages 3 and 15. But it says Tinubu rally support for drug war, assures NDLA of more help, agencies drug test kits, a necessity for every home, school and office. That's what the story is about right there at the bottom of the page. What, you know, uh, what, what ticks me here in this story is the fact that these figures are real. The question we should be asking ourselves is what is the reason why people would rather go for these illicit drugs as opposed to you know, getting the right kind of help. I don't believe that it is, I, I, I can't imagine that we can say for a fact that we don't know who these drug barrels are. I don't know, but I'm, I'm just finding it difficult. The reason is really not far-fetched. These drugs are not cheap. Illicit drugs are not cheap. They are very, very expensive. Uh, not too long ago, we found some information, you know, making the rounds that some vehicle of some uh, official, you know, was used to ferry some 
loads and loads and loads of these hard drugs on the road and he had to take other security agencies to arrest that particular vehicle and you know detain it and whatever investigation is, is being carried on now i guess we'll wait to see so the question is it is not that these people are ghosts and it is our people that is that are suffering at the end of this if i don't i don't want to believe that these 64 million people who suffer from drug use disorders are just in nigeria as i said you find the details on the inside pages but there is a significant number in Nigeria and the NDLEA has continued to shout that these things are happening up north and in various other parts of the country. And when we talk about drugs, we are not just talking about the ones that are known. There are others that are being, that are being evolved by young people whose future we are, we are literally putting you know, at stake. I'm hoping that there will be some answers here and some correct collaboration so that these things can be addressed, these issues can be addressed and please recognize that the future of Nigeria is very, very, is very, very important here. From time to time we hear people talk about the fact that we need to protect the young people, we need to prepare them for the future with this kind of vulnerability. My hopes are very dear. Okay. It's a pain I can feel, Ayo. I mean, when you think of how many children uh, or young people are involved in this, we have to, you know, commend those who are taking up this advocacy very seriously the advocacy and taking it to schools taking it to where young people are gathered you know or where they are as individuals to say look this is not the way to go uh this is a pit that you you can fall in and there there might be no way out you know the use of 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 hard drugs um i, I do hope that it's something that we we see as an emergency even though you know we we'll say there are so many emergencies before us but some things, uh, will I say, are more of an emergency than others. There are many fires we need to put out. But when it affects the young people, when it affects the future of our country, then we really know that we need to prioritize that. I think there was a paper I saw uh, that was saying that there are about two, yeah, this is it, the Guardian newspaper is very closely related to it. Northeast, home to over two million uneducated children says UNICEF. I mean, what exactly are we preparing for the future if we leave our young children uneducated? If you were to add that to the number of young people all over the country who are out of school, who have no future, because essentially that's what we're doing. We're depriving them of a future and we're depriving them um, of the ability to be meaningful citizens, citizens who contribute meaningfully to the development of our country. And this is already 2 million, which the UNICEF is already enumerating for us. Um, this, these are emergencies. These are emergencies to, emergencies to keep the ones in school, in school, to ensure that the ones who are out of school, you know, get into school. Because this is bordering on the future of Nigeria as a whole. Currently, we're dealing with insecurity. We're dealing with all, we're dealing with a number of issues, terrorism. They are all closely related to things that we did not do in the past. So if as much as people invested in the past, well, we're still where we are, how much more now when we are now having a, a swelling number or rising number of children who are out of school? It is, it is truly a very worrisome situation, Germany. Well, yeah, but um, in addition to as if all our worries are over, as if they're not enough, the front page of leadership also reminds us. Because when that announcement came uh, earlier this year, about the Soron Sanyan report, many thought, oh, at last, somebody is finally taking or moving in the direction that at least it will make government probably for the use front was nimble, efficient, functional, you know, but look at that. Four months after, FG Food drives on merger of MDAs. Now, the paper was quick to also remind us that earlier this year, I think in February, the Federal Executive Council had approved that merger when the Special Advisor to the President read out the firms that were going to be merged. And then they talked about different agencies that were merged, how they were going to be functional. But now, much as they tell us that the civil servants are looking forward to a leaner and more efficient civil service 
as a result of this merger. Lena. That's, well, in the manner of speaking. Chairman, look, let me tell you what is on the front burner right now. For the federal <laughs> government, uh, before mm -hmm. they do anything with civil servants, they have to first of all address minimum wage. That's oh. it. They need to. Well, <laughs> so that has taken the, the hard, that has taken a big chunk of the pie. I think the attention, the discussions around minimum wage. You know, really well, interesting it, to it see. it's not everybody in civil service that is involved in negotiation of minimum wage. There's a tripartite committee that is set up. So that's how government works. They set up committees to do things. Mm -hmm. If they want to focus on nothing works, nothing will work. Let nothing will move say, forward. Let us just say that perhaps the, the, the spirit is willing for the moment. How but can he be we... waiting on flesh week? <laughs> As of February, we understand FEC had approved it. Mm -hmm. And so if FEC had approved it, mm -hmm. so what's going on? Uh, Some say they're lobbying. They if, if groups across... that will be merged mm -hmm. are lobbying to say, well, don't do this, don't do that. So wasn't yeah. that well thought of? They have come across obstacles that are bigger than them. They have... Well, oh. you know, if for a government that truly wills, there's nothing that is bigger than a government that is determined. That's the truth of the matter. All of these things I've just said, I'm just trying to be cynical. <laughs> because the truth of the matter is, we, this is not the first time we have heard this type of things. When the Oronsanye report was actually uh, conceived and eventually uh, produced, people thought, oh, look, government is, yes, they are right on track. They, they, they may they mean well, they want to do good for the country, etc. Uh, why, why couldn't they implement it? Huh? So there you go. This is where we are. Uh, big questions for the government. What is going on with yeah. the Oronsanye report? Four months after that announcement, still grappling with stuff so all right so there you go uh, that wraps it up with a look at some of the dailies here this morning we're back in a moment stay on with us